Hello guys, I'm pleased, r really pleased to see so many people survived one and a half days and lunch, so it's very good and I, ho I hope I hope that's going to be an interesting presentation for you. So obviously it's about Redpack and uh, just before I dive into Redpack and just tell a few words about me. Uh, I always position myself as a developer even though I do a lot of different stuff, uh, architecting, helping DevOps guys, coaching, speaking, uh, wrote half of the book. Uh, I also have a small company, uh, consulting company, which is based in Riga in Latvia, and I'm mostly working with clients in Scandinavia. But that's not much interesting. I'm, I'm easily findable on, on, on the net, so if you have any questions or want to uh, find us some information, it's quite easy to find. But we are here to talk about Radpack. How many of you guys have been on Alvaro's talk today in, in the morning? Okay, well, you can probably sleep for a couple of minutes because it's going to be pretty much the same start. Uh, how many of you guys have used Redpack for anything? One guy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that, that, that's good. That's, that's, that, that means that's a good audience match then. <coughs> uh, well, one thing I probably did mention uh, is that I, I am a Java developer, of course, but I am I'm, I'm a Groovy font fanboy because I actually also wrote a book about Groovy and I love Groovy m not much better than Java, but I, I like to co uh, combine them together to get to the, the power of both. Uh, so most of the examples that I'm, gonna sh I'm going to show, they're going to be in Groovy. How, how, uh, how are you guys uh, feeling about Groovy? Did it's Groovy. Yay! <laughs> So, uh, who, who actually writes code in Groovy? Okay, not that many. Who, 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 who reads code in Groovy? <laughs> that's good. That, that's, that's probably like the required skill for this presentation. But, I mean, Groovy is kind of, uh, it's, 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 it supports 100% of Java syntax, al almost. Uh, and uh, pr pretty much if you know Java, you kind of already know Groovy because it's the interop in interoperability is on a very high level and it's very easy to get started. Uh, but yeah, Redpack is one thing that we're going to discuss, but one another thing that we're going to kind of try to apply Redpack to is microservices. And if we look at uh, Martin Follow's blog where he tries to define what microservices is, well, Microservice and architectural style is an approach to developing a single application as a suite of small services, each running on its own process and communicating with lightweight mechanism of an HTTP resource API. Well, simple definition, and what th that's probably usually what people understand are microservice. Uh, on the other hand, to me, it's, and probably to many others, uh, microservice is not really about uh, how you do it. I mean, uh, how, how you do it on a technical level, what kind of libraries you use, kind of protocol you use, but actually it's more like uh, an organizational pattern. It's the way you organize, uh, you organize your teams and the way you organize your workflow, rather than how big is, is your microservice or how many code lines it has uh, and how many like a API endpoints it has. It really doesn't matter because microservice could be big. Uh, it's just that it should focus on some certain thing that is doing good and doing, do doing only. Uh, but Regardless of what I said, I mean, I'm, I'm actually going to focus on size, on size of the microservice in terms of code lines. And we're going to uh, do a pretty quick start with that. Uh, and for those of you who have been on an Alvarez talk, that's pretty much the same uh, thing. But I, I, I want to repeat that. It's really easy to start writing services in Redpack with the help of Groovy, with the help of Java. Uh, one thing that you will need for sure is uh, you definitely will need the latest Java version, Java 8. Well, maybe so some of the some of the not so up-to-date releases, but Java 8 it should be, because uh, it was a deliberate uh, decision made by Redpack development team to actually only support Java 8. So no support for the Java 7, Java 6, Java 5, no backward compatibility with that. Forget about that. It's modern framework. Uh, and the thing is that it's it's fully written in Java, uh, in Java 8. So, in, in fact, the core is, is not dependent on Groovy whatsoever. So, if you don't like Groovy or don't want to learn Groovy, you don't have to. And you can easily use the Java API. And because it's like, it's Java 8 API, which uh, leverages Lambdas and uh, uh, a lot of uh, new features in Java 8, it's actually much more pleasant to work with than if it would be uh, Java 7 API, for example. Uh, 
but in order to start with, with an example, you actually have to install Groovy because we need Groovy as a, as a glue code, as, as an enabler for, for our quick and, uh, <coughs> quick and microservice, mi micro microservice. Optionally, you will eventually also probably need to install Gradle. By the way, how many of you guys use Gradle? Well, roughly like 20%. I guess the others are using Maven, right? Well, well, it's still possible to use uh, Redpack with, with uh, Maven because uh, under the hood is just a library, uh, actually just a set of libraries, so it's, the, it's no, no limitation. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, Gradle has, uh, Redpack has a Gradle plugin which is very well supported and it, well, it works out of the box and you, you can actually also get a lot of other goodies from, from Gradle, so it's worth looking at that. Uh, any of you guys maybe use Ant still? <laughs> okay. Well, it's still possible to do it with Ant. I think it's even possible to do it with Make if you, if you are that old, but it's no limitation. It's just a Java library. Uh, the way you would do it in Groovy, uh, first of all, you start to open the editor and start typing it in. And uh, the thing that Groovy has built in is uh, grab annotations, uh, which is basically a dependency management mechanism built into the language. So you can say that before we import something, we actually have to grab the jars and dependencies from Maven Central. And it will happen automatically inside the script. So we kind of mimic the, the, the build system inside single script in Groovy. Uh, the actual meat of, 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 the, uh, of the service is uh, quite simple. So we have a set of closures. We are nesting them to in, in inside. So like Redpack is the main one. Then we have a set of handlers. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain what handlers are. And then, as you can probably guess, we are serving the get, HTTP get method on pretty much any URL that is being so sent to, to this server. And that's it. And then we just serve some, uh, we respond back with some kind of uh, response, which in, in this case is going to be a date uh, and some, 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 some text. So pretty easy, pretty easy to start. So you can just run one, one script and run it. Uh, now, of course, af after you type it in, you have to save it. and after that, just run like Groovy, Redpack, and Groovy, and you will have a server which will open, uh, which will answer to the uh, to the endpoint, so the get methods of HTTP. Uh, and I can actually show how 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 it, how it looks like. Yeah, uh, because this uh, annotation they, they they are called Grape, uh, like Groovy Advanced Package uh, Dependency something. Uh, and by default, it's it's not verbose. It's not showing anything. So w when you first time start the script, it will you will see a, a delay because it's actually downloading the libraries, but it's not telling you that it's doing that because it's very silent, very shy. Uh, but in order to show that that something is happening, you can you can enable this option saying like uh, minus d groovy grape report downloads equals true, and it will, it will show you what kind of libraries it's downloading and what kind of libraries it's uh, getting from Maven Central. Uh, but the next time you start uh, your uh, Groovy script, uh, Redpack script, it will not happen because it, the, the libraries will already be cached inside your user uh, directory, and uh, startup time will be like a few milliseconds, really. Just to show you how it, how it looks like, and just to prove that I'm actually not cheating, uh, that's, that's the script. Uh, do you see it, guys? Or could, should I make it bigger? Maybe I can make it a bit bigger. Uh, like this. Is it better? Cool. So that that's the script. Uh, and as you see, the run command looks like this. Uh, oh, I can just, I'm going to cheat a bit. Uh, and because I already ran it before, it's probably not going to download anything. And actually, it's running already. I mean, it's well, it doesn't say anything, but actually, it's running. And uh, by default, it's starting on port 5050. Uh, and oops, not wrong port. 5050. And that's what I get. Yeah, time and date. I can probably make it bigger so you you see it for sure. Okay, so that was a quick start, and the rest of the examples will be also quite quick in in, in what we do. 
but first of all, let's start with with the uh, with the facts about how this framework appeared, what what is what is behind it, and who is behind it. Uh, the name came from uh, this group. Well, honestly, I I, I only know Frank Sinatra. Uh, the, I I don't know the others. I'm not from the states, and probably you know some of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, it was a po popular group in the States and uh, they, they were kind of cultural thing. They were calling themselves Red Pack. And uh, the reason is that initially Red Pack was kind of created as a clone of a Ruby library called Sinatra. Uh, and because it kind of oh, superseded what was in initially in, in, in the framework, they kind of called it Red Pack. So Sinatra plus the other guys. Uh, <laughs> And how, how they define it themselves, it's like Redpack is a tool set that combines several Java libraries that allows efficiently developing, performing, and testable. Uh, testable is a very important word, uh, HTTP applications. It was inspired by Sinatra. It was initially started as a Groovy DSL, but through the, through the time they decided to completely switch to Java and specifically Java 8. It doesn't require a container, so it's completely standalone framework, so you don't need to deploy it to any, any kind of servers. You don't need Tomcat, you don't need you know, WebLogic. It, it just works out of the box in, 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 in some process. It doesn't implement servlet API, so no servlet APIs, no sessions, no requests. I, even though it has its own API uh, that is kind of very similar, but uh, actually quite simpler uh, as well. Uh, and the reason for not implementing servlet API is that uh, servlet API by contract is actually one thread per request. And that's what Threadpack actually wanted to avoid. They wanted to create a non-blocking implementation of uh, HTTP application uh, stack. Uh, and Serval API kind of doesn't allow that uh, to, 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 to some extent. And it has some, some limitations on the API level. And it goes, it's open source, it goes in an Apache 2 license. So the core of Threadpack is very minimal. Uh, and it's just based on a few abstractions. And it's really like a few of them, handler, registry, context, uh, uh, that's basically it, uh, seriously. It's, not, it's very simple, uh, but it's very powerful at the same time. Uh, there are many additional modules uh, that kind of enhance Redspack, but still uh, mo most of them are like in, 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 in the core uh, repository in, Git, in GitHub. Uh, and mo most of them are very generic, but still uh, quite enough to start to, to solve majority of the use cases that usually like, HTTP application developers uh, face. Uh, plus, it's very lightweight, so you the, the core of your Threadpack is uh, running very fast and uh, starting in like in a matter of milliseconds and very small footprint. And because it doesn't s use a lot of threads, uh, or has a special pool for the for, for for running requests, it actually is quite performing as well. Uh, it doesn't have any like special uh, plugin uh, system. Actually, it's just just using uh, Juice. To to inject itself, uh, to inject fun functionality into itself, and uh, yeah, you can just if you know how to use Juice, or you how, how if you know how to use Spring or Spring Boot, you can actually write extensions to uh, Redpack because it's going to be just plain, uh, plain plain Java objects, nothing else, or plain Groovy objects. Oh. So underneath uh, the main uh, driving point, the main uh, engine for for Redpack is Netty. No, uh, which is, uh, I think, ma many other HTTP-based no and network-based uh, protocol implementation actually using. So that that's the core. Uh, that's the, the main library that is being used for for non-blocking implementation and for for HTTP processing. Uh, Juice for for dependency management. Redpack core with all the basic APIs, uh, and then then you can add additional Redpack libraries like Redpack Groovy, Redpack Redpack Test, Redpack JSON, uh, Jackson. Uh, Redpack uh, session Redis or stuff like that. So, but in general, you can only survive with with these three, which which is the core. It's also very active in, in what what's happening in in, in the code base uh, in the last three years. And if we if we look at the release history, the first release was like in 2012, and it was another guy starting the project, and it was still like in Groovy, uh, Groovy DSL. Then like. He, he probably released the next version in, uh, in November of 2012. And then at, at, at some point, like team started to assemble to actually build it more, more frequently and more uh, uh, actively. 
And as you see, they pretty much do release every uh, month since since, 2000, since January 2014. So in like in March 2015, it was the 9.14 version. And finally, finally in September, they, uh, the fifteenth of September, they actually reached the version 1.0. Which means that this the all, all, all the APIs that are exposed to to, uh, to the framework users is stable and it's not going to change. So it's actually ready to be used in in, in, in production and uh, real systems. Okay. So if you look at the commit history, like pretty much shows a similar picture as, as the release the release uh, numbers. It's very active. It's very active since 2013, and now and now the team is growing. Uh, oh, images are kind of loading very slow. Yeah. So it has at the moment it has uh, contributions from 78 people. Uh, it has so almost 800 stars. It's mostly Java, and it has 27 releases, as you've seen before. And like commit history is also obvious thing. Uh, the core team is composed of these guys. Maybe you've seen them, but actually, they all uh, I met all of them in uh, like Groovy conferences. And well, I don't want really to make like analogy between Redback and uh, with with Frank Sinatra and then this team, but uh, sometimes actually just pops up. I mean, yeah, they they they, they are good. They are great, and uh, they're very very good guys and uh, very passionate about the, the product and uh, very helpful. Also, there is like a forum uh, in you know, on Slack that you can fill follow up and uh, have you, you you will get help there if if you have some problems. Uh, okay, okay. So if we might make an overview of the modules, then not many of them like can compare, for example, I don't know to number of jars in Maven Central, but still there is quite a few. So there is like support for configuration uh, injection for different for different sources, like from. Uh, Environment from properties from uh, system properties, uh, session management, uh, reactive programming, uh, asynchronous programming with uh, Rx module and uh, Java Rx module and re remote module, authentication through Pack4j, uh, also the built-in packaging is supported supported by Gradle, even though as I said it could be done in Maven as well, uh, just you will have less goodies, but still because it's a library, I mean it's possible to do that. Different uh, in-memory databases and da data sources, dependency injections through Goose and Spring Boot, JSON through Jackson uh, library. <coughs> uh, it has a uh, DSL uh, language binding to Groovy. Also has uh, one to Kotlin. Uh, I th I'm not sure if it's up to date, but uh, at some point it was. So if you guys, well, actually, is anybody using Kotlin here? No. Okay. Good. Well, then don't care then. Uh, also, there are uh, some some of the libraries that. Uh, but, but how many of you guys have been on uh, Joshua Long uh, presentation on, on on Monday? Well, you probably see have heard of uh, Hystrix and uh, the Drop Wizard metrics, and Redpack also also has integration with the with those libraries, which are pretty good for for monitoring and circuit breakers. Different templating engines, uh, different testing functionality that you can. We reuse like uh, libraries in, in Groovy. You have, you have Spock, you have Gap, and you can reuse them with, with the help of uh, abstractions that Redpack gives. Okay, uh, some of you probably, who, for those who don't use Groovy, probably may, may may think that Groovy is not really performing sometimes. Well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> sometimes it may be slow, but uh, the thing is that the core uh, of Redpack is Java 8 plus. Uh, by combining the knowledge of Groovy that you can actually make classes uh, more or less uh, st statically compiled and have some additional type checking with the help of compile static annotation and type check annotation. Uh, you can actually get a lot from, from reusing some of the dynamic features of Groovy as well, like uh, closures and especially the delegates to annotation. I will try to show it in, uh, during the demos. So. If we're going to use Redpack with uh, Groovy, then the best idea that uh, I know is IntelliJ IDEA. Actually, th the only reason I switched from Eclipse, I'm, I'm like a long, long term, long, long time Eclipse user, but I'm switched to uh, IntelliJ IDEA only because of uh, bad Groovy support, unfortunately. So, IDEA was much better than that. Uh, and also, I think it's the Gradle integration is also better in IDEA. But if you're 
doing it in Maven or you're doing it uh, only in Java, then Eclipse is, is quite 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 good as well because it, especially if you like on Java 8, that will also give you all all, all the code completion and uh, all the APIs will be available through Java 8. Uh, I haven't tried NetBeans, but probably no, gonna not gonna be much luck there. Okay, let's dive deeper a bit. Uh, so all all request handling uh, inside a Redpack application is done through handlers, and that's what we've seen in that simple script. We have a handlers closure uh, construction that wraps the whole thing, uh, and that's basically like the handler. Uh, the handlers is the handler chain, which has a set of uh, handlers that will uh, they are called one by another, one one after another until one of them actually responds to something. And there is also default handler which returns uh, some some e either error or uh, some um, some empty uh, response. Uh, and of course, you, you can probably notice that there's like similarity between Servlet API and uh, what uh, Redpack offers, like response requests. These are pretty, pretty obvious uh, abstractions. Uh, handler is kind of something in the middle or something combined uh, between Servlet uh, itself and fil Servlet filter, so it actually can act as both. And chain is basically everything that combines it together. Uh, and one thing that actually Redpack uh, can do uh, that, for example, Servlet API probably can't, is that you can actually insert handlers during processing. So you can make the chain uh, evolve while you process your request. Uh, quite dynamic. Uh, yes. And if you look at that, so when request enters the like a handle chain, it has also uh, access to the global registry of objects, which is like dependency injection mechanism for getting uh, resources or and, and services from, from, from a Redpack application. But also on each uh, next step to the next handler, you can actually add more objects to, to, the, to the registry, and it's kind of going to add up on to the global registry. So while the processing, uh, you kind of accumulate different, different objects in, 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 in the registry, and some of them is like global ones, some of them are request-wise. And eventually, if some of the handlers finds that it actually is ready to send response, it will, it will do that. Okay, let's write some code. Uh, well let's expand the, the the date server that the date okay uh, let me expand it a bit do you see it guys so in the back do you see it cool so well, since we are in like in uh, in Groovy, we can actually do things like this, which we can't really do in Java, but uh, that's fine. So we can just insert like things like that. And another good thing about Redpack that's actually it can reload application uh, automatically when there are changes. So if we now if I now I start the application and it's gonna run, well now you see it's kind of downloading libraries, but look like it's trying to see if libraries are there, but it's not quite important to us. Uh, so, if I if I go here now and I s no, it doesn't work. Why don't you work? Maybe because I used a different port, right? Yeah, it's five five five. Okay. So let me show you. Let me show you some magic. So it's running. I get a response. Now I go to the script, and I change it, like. I'm on super GDD. Is I save the file. I don't restart anything. I just refresh, and it doesn't work. <laughs> and the reason it doesn't work, actually, I know. I know why. Uh, well, the thing is that by default, Redpack is actually running in production mode, so it's it's kind of production ready. Uh, that's why it doesn't support re reloading by by default. But if I say that, uh, well, we can say like that, Redpack port. And I say that rat rat back development development true, then the reloading actually should be supported. Yeah, but let me demonstrate that. So I, I remove this super, or maybe I'm a super duper uh, and I refresh now, and now it works. So you can actually change the file 
and uh, don't restart anything. It will be automatically picked up by Red Pack. So very handy when you develop, and uh, probably also handy in production because you can just you know copy the files and it, they just work. Uh, okay, so we can we should continue changing that. So since we are on Java A eight, we can actually use some APIs that uh, I'm going to copy them from here that are not actually defined by in, in, in Java 7 or 6. So I can just use the zone time date because, you know, actually the date that I was showing, it's, it's uh, uh, the time and it's actually quite s slightly wrong because uh, my computer is in, in uh, like one hour ahead of time in from Krakow because uh, I'm from Riga. Uh, so we need to use the time zone to actually do that. Uh, and we can do it like this. Let me copy the right thing. So, I'll do it like this. I'll, I created a method which actually will... And all oh, the good thing, I don't need to think about uh, breakfast compatibility because this API is Java 8 and only Java 8. If I re reload it now... Yeah, it's kind of showing me the... Well, a different time zone. Let's see, worse off. Now, uh, if I go further, if I like expand my, my uh, I can actually enable more logging because at this point uh, our, our red pack is kind of silent and doesn't show anything. And uh, for that, I actually need to restart it because uh, it has to load some libraries. I terminate that. Uh, so. I will actually disable this thing from so we don't care about the the grape anymore. Okay, I start it. Okay, now it has a bit more login, so it's like you see it's actually starting the in development mode. And if I do a change in the in the script, whatever it is. Oops. No, I don't want to delete GDD. I want to delete the other thing. Actually, yeah, it's, it's reloading. Okay, uh, so let's let's go next thing. Uh, uh, of course, well, serving only one endpoint is not really interesting. But le let's let's see that what we what, what we can do with handlers. And one of the things we can do is actually say that we want to serve something different. So we can do things like this. And I'm going to copy the, the JSON. For example, let, let's say that we, we expose our data API to, to our another department, and we want to be nice with them because you know there's some nice young guys who like JSON and maybe some older guys who prefer XML. And um, we can expose both of them at this point, at this, uh, this time in different endpoints. And as you can see, we just uh, call the render method, and we define some constructs here which actually construct our data objects. Uh, it's kind of kind of like you know semi-functional programming, uh, combining data structures and code, because actually this is code, but it constructs the data structure for us, and I think it's quite readable for what, what what's happening. In this case, is JSON, and in this case, is Markup Builder that builds uh, XML with 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 the help of uh, Groovy dynamic features. Uh, but before before these things works, we need actually to add some some imports, and those imports are going to be this ones. So we need GUI Markup Builder, and we need uh, we need this, and we need and now we need to Im actually import some some of the modules because uh, some of some of the components that are injected for for making this renderers work uh, they come from 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 modules. So we need we need to inject them, and in this case is oh sorry wrong wrong uh, layer. So before handlers we can define bindings. We should define our Basically, global registry of of uh, service of the server, and there we can actually say, well, I, wa I want this module to be available, and this is like default module of Redpack for doing text templates, and this is the default module for Redpack doing uh, markup templates for Groovy, uh, and some of some, and this are we just importing some static methods that help us doing some similar things. So now, if we enough, we go to let's say this JSON. Do we get something? No, we don't because there is some error. And the good thing about Redpack that actually have a nice page, a very stylish page about showing, oh, you know, I have an error. Uh, 
And it says that we have some, some, some problems. We don't actually haven't imported the class that we wanted to use. So we just do that now. And do it now. Okay, and let's try again. Yeah, we get JSON. What about XML? We get XML as well. Cool. Uh, so, and as, as you notice, I didn't restart script at, at, at any point. It was always running. It was kind of picking up the changes quite fast. Uh, okay. Uh, what's next? I wanted to show you that we can also use templates uh, for uh, defining uh, what we want to produce. And let's say we want to actually make a HTML endpoint. So this can also be done like in the uh, in this way. So we, we get uh, some kind of template. And in this case, it's going to be like groovy template, which will build a markup and pass some parameters to that in the form of the map. And we, as you see, we pass the the, the, the daytime. Uh, so if we go to this HTML, it's probably not going to work because yeah, it's not found. And the reason it's not found, oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. The reason it's not found because we actually, oh, why, why is it not found actually? Good question, why is it not found? Should be found. Did I type something wrong? Yeah, it's better. So again, we missed some um, imports and that's all easily edible. Uh, so I just add all of them. So we have them. We still have issues because, uh, uh, because so HTML here is, okay, uh, let me check. Values, bindings, run closure, 19. No, this one. Line 19, nothing special. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, I'll just copy my original script to have everything at the same time. Uh, let's see. Okay, now it's better, <laughs> uh, and I'll explain why. <laughs> uh, the reason it uh, fails now because it, has, it cannot find template which I specified in, uh, in in the script, and the template is uh, defined uh, here, like time, GTPL, and it usually right back is actually searching for this template inside the templates directory. So I'm going to copy that template directory from my other project, uh, and let's see what's going on now. Okay, we get something, but well, trust me, that was supposed to be a nice uh, thing. And the reason is we're missing something because we actually didn't copy assets. And assets in, in uh, like static files uh, in, in Redpack can be defined in, in, in this way. You just say files, di directory, and you can specify as many directories as you want, and you can also specify files in this way. So let's check what's going on now. Ooh, it's going better. So much nicer template. So also we now introduced a additional endpoint for serving HTML, and we all did that in a single script. Yes. Sorry. You you define the files and copy the directory. Yep. Uh, I know you said that it doesn't support the servlet specification, but the servlet uh, has this nice feature that you can put your static assets into a jar file and emit meta and free sources, and it gets served out of the box through the server specification. Is there any this kind of nitty gritty thing in Runback? Mm, good question. Actually, I don't know. Is that I can, for example, bundle all my all my static assets? say the JavaScript files done by the front-end guys and uh, show uh, it uh, in uh, a single file, in uh, a single uh, jar uh, or I think, I think yes, because uh, uh, I'll, I'll show it later in, 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 in the Gradle script. Uh, I'll, I'll show it how, how it gets packaged together because there's a special source directory and then the like uh, uh, tree structure of uh, Redpack project. Okay. Uh, one is which is called Redpack, which actually has to have this uh, static files which you can ref refer from. 
Okay. So it's not really class path, but uh, Redpack takes, takes takes care of that. So, so the bottom end, I can put it into my Nexus repository yeah. and yeah. take it from yeah. a, as a dependency. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's say that uh, our uh, our data API is, is working fine and everybody's using that. Everybody's happy, but you know it's time to move on, and we decided to actually produce a version two of our API. And the thing is, we we can leave the the other one as as is, but uh, Redpack has this functionality of actually having like nested paths, which where you can actually define that I want v2, for example, version 2 of our API, the, the, the path, to be served by, by additional handlers. And I, I can actually do that by serving them uh, on, on a, uh, based on the content type, because I'm, I'm now s getting smarter, so I, I know that using endpoint uh, HTML and uh, JSON as, as endpoint uh, part is not pr pretty good. I, I can actually use headers, and that's what I actually would try to do with this, uh, with this uh, approach, so I, I can say that. Any request are going to uh, v2 and, every, uh, and submitting a post method and having a type of, let's say, applica application JSON actually returns JSON. If it's application type, uh, if content type is XML, we get XML. And if it's plain text, we get plain text. Uh, and yeah, I can, I can show you that actually works. So I just wrote this simple uh, curl script. That gonna do gonna fetch the, the v2 uh, endpoint, and let's see we got everything. So we got XML, uh, JSON, and text, and we just use we use the same endpoint, but we use specified different headers. Uh, and well, that th th that's the idea with the Redpack that you can actually, based on different conditions like content type, like uh, HTTP verb, uh, like uh, also you, you can use it based on host, uh, like virtual host. So you can also do some logic that is inside the application. So it's Really, HTTP uh, rich application that can you can leverage all the possibilities of HTTP uh, to to build your logic inside your APIs or inside your services. Okay. Uh, okay. A at this point, if you, if you look at the script, it's well, it's still small. It's still manageable, I guess. But uh, seventy or eighty lines is probably already too much. So we can probably start refactoring it into something more uh, manageable. Uh, and one thing we can do is uh, uh, actually use oh. uh, is use a tool called Lazy Bones to initialize a template for uh, Gradle. Uh, and for those who don't know, Gr Lazy Bones is basically a template engine for uh, which is originally actually was created for s to support Redpack, but then it grew to actually have other, other template. Uh, types. Uh, it's kind of similar to Maven archetype. Uh, and if I go to uh, like directory E and I have lazy bones, uh, create red back and GDD date server, uh, lazy bones. Hmm. Okay. GDM. Well, it should be installed. I mean, in flying mode, that's very nice. Uh, does anyone know which network actually works here? Uh, this one? Okay. Yeah, because we kind of ha have to get template from 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 the net. <laughs> Okay, and now we try lazy bones, create red back uh, GDD date server. Will it work? Yeah, it seems like. Uh, and if we go to the directory now, uh, ba well basically what it creates, it's it creates uh, as a empty uh, red pack project for for Gradle. Uh, and if I look at that, what, what's happening here is uh, we actually, do you see it, guys? Okay. Well, I, I can probably open it on like wide screen. It's probably better. Uh, what it has uh, applied as plugin is Redpack Groovy plugin, uh, which adds additional functionality to, to, to how, how it generates stuff. And beside that, it's just 
uh, nothing else. Uh, it's uh, like Spock for testing and uh, SL for J for logging. Uh, and yeah, another plugin that we're gonna mention as well is the Shadow for creating fat jars. So very simple. And if you look at the structure, what's what's inside? It's like three uh, sort of directories. Well, the ones you probably know is like main Groovy. It's empty. Another one is test Groovy. It's empty as well, but you can put stuff there, of course. And there is also uh, Rat Pack directory, which Rat Packs treats in a special way. Uh, and there is uh, this basic script, uh, which we can actually replace with our code and ha have it running. Uh, and we can take uh, like the whole thing and put it put it here. And of course, we need to remove the grab annotations at this point because we don't need them uh, anymore because Gradle will take care of that. And uh, as uh, Jakob was asking also, well, there's a public directory with, with, the, with the resources, with the images, uh, and also like placeholder for scripts and styles, and also a default template, which you can also use uh, later on. So now we pack moved our stuff into, into a Gradle project, basically just copying the script. And uh, what we can do now is uh, uh, using uh, Gradle run command, we can just run the, the whole application. And it's going to be we'll probably, yeah, we'll probably need to kill the other one. Uh, Gradle will now build it and then start start start, start uh, the application the same way that script was working. But now we have more f possibilities with that because we can use all the features of Gradle. For example, now we can generate project for an uh, IntelliJ idea and start like editing for real because you know using Notepad for writing scripts is okay, but writing real applications is probably not a good idea. Uh, and as you see, yeah, it started, it's working, so we, we can actually kill it for now. Uh, and the good thing, we, we, can, we can generate uh, idea project. Okay, we are done. And now I can start the, the idea project and, uh, and start coding for real. Okay, it's it gonna take a bit of time, maybe one minute, maybe less. Uh, the good thing is that Gradle also supports this uh, reloading mode, uh, so you can use this run command to actually start your application, but you have to start it in a continuous mode. Uh, and we can do it from, from idea as well. Uh, I'll show you how, how, how it can happen. So we can have the server running all the time and we're just coding and changing the code. Uh, so now importing this, just using the wrapper, which is a default one. And the, the template generates the, the Gradle wrapper, so we don't need to care about which version is that. Uh, but I think this continuous uh, build was only supported from 2.6, I think. So yeah, it's the Gradle version had to be pretty recent for, for, for this to work, for this reloading to work. Okay, we're in. Uh, we have our project. We have all the sources. We have our red pack file. Uh, okay. So now, in order to run our application in continuous mode, so we can all constantly change and refactor it, uh, we just basically go to Gradle, uh, uh, and we just select the run command. OK. It started, but it started in, in a wrong mode. It started not, not in a continuous mode, so we kill it for now. Uh, and we just go on edit configuration and say that we want this to be con Oops. Continuous, correct, correct. Uh, and now we just start it again. So yeah, starting server, building registry, up and running. Port fifty fifty, we are in. We are getting some internal errors. That's good. Uh, I probably missed some. Some libraries. Create internal failed to render text template missing. What? That's weird. Sorry? Yeah, but it's kind of here. Ah, you're right. Right. Good spot. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going to copy them here, like assets and templates. 
to your right, and we're going to try to this. No, it's, it's working. What, would we, what do we get? We get renderer. Yeah, well, it's there. Let's check it again. Okay. Let's check if the other script actually not running. Uh, no, nothing. It's going. It's going up, and we have all our all our endpoints uh, like back, back and working. I guess, yeah. So transforming from a script to a uh, fully blown build is was kind of easy, and uh, just basically copy all the files into Redpack directory, and now we can actually start extracting stuff uh, if if we want to, because you know s script gonna go gonna grow eventually. Uh, and the good thing about uh, Idea and uh, Groovy support is that. This actually is uh, g giving you a um, uh, co-completion because uh, it actually shows that the, uh, it knows something about this get method, for example. If I maybe make it bigger. Uh, presentation mode. So it, sh it, it shows that it knows something about the method because if it was something like get oh, E, it would say that, oh, sorry, it's something I, I don't know. And as you see, it's also highlighting that it doesn't know something about that because the, the way it happens in, in Groovy uh, is that you basically pass a code lock, a closure, to a method. And uh, you w the, the way it's de designed here is that it says that uh, the closure parameter, this like last parameter of the method, actually is delegating its method calls to a Groovy context. And idea is smart enough to actually know about it and help us with the code completion for this Groovy context. So everything it sees inside the closure actually belongs to Groovy context. And I if, if we go to this Groovy context, actually it has this render method somewhere. Uh, or maybe should well probably has has it on the context. Is this render method? Uh, yeah, here it is, the render method. So it sees the class hierarchy and sees these delegates to annotation on, 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 on the API and can help us building these nested closures and nested handlers together. Uh, and th that's kind of a beauty of well, the whole thing because it's very concise. You don't need to have to specify all, all the verbosity you would have in Java and still have a kind of readable API. Uh, okay. So. What's next? Uh, we can also try to switch part of the code to Java. And the way it, for example, works here, uh, the method actually, as th this method prefix, it's uh, one of the methods that composes the handle chain. And obviously, what it accepts is, as, as, as a, uh, is an action, uh, which is basically a handler. So we can, we can actually get our code and expo ex extract it as a, uh, as a handler implementation. And instead of passing the closure, we just pass the I instance of handler. And th in this way, we can factor out part of the scripts and uh, yeah, may, may make a better uh, organization of the code eventually. Uh, I really what should I try to do maybe? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll maybe show it on another example. It could be easier. Uh, and if, if it's speaking about our pr first uh, example with, with, with just a script, we can actually also test the script using uh, another framework called GAP. And GAP is basically like a selen Selenium wrapper, so we can start uh, like real browser and verify our tests. So for example, we've written a small script uh, that uh, checks that uh, the, the digit and then the HTML clock actually is uh, the, 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 like the minute, the biggest, uh, the, the top minute is, is the one that actually happening now. So, uh, yeah, and again, we, we can just again start very simple. We can start with one script for the service, one script for the test, and go for that for a while. Then we can split it up and do a better organization of the code. Okay. 
uh, yeah, just to summarize uh, some of some of the, some of the APIs that that uh, Redpack exposes, uh, a prefix it allows you to have a prefix on some group of methods, and each one of the of the of the verbs can also have additional paths. So we, it's very easy way to group stuff, and you can have as many prefixes as you want next uh, nested in each other. So if you have complex APIs, it's quite quite easy to expo expose that. Uh, one the one uh, notation that you see the method that you see is like by method, so you can have one path serving several different different verbs uh, and have different logic uh, depending on those. You can also do the same logic based on content type, uh, and you can you can specify your own type or you can use some of the predefined ones that are pretty common like JSON and XML. Uh, static content uh, it could be file, it could be directory, and it could be as many as as you want. Uh, also templates, uh, you, you, you can use a simple text template where you just basically, this HTML is, is kind of resembles uh, JSP where you have placeholders uh, which are JSP-like, or you can have, oh, li like this, yeah, so logic, like that. Or you can have a uh, GUI markup template which actually will allow you to construct data structure out of your markup, or which will look something like this. So it's ba basically, it's, it, it's, it's code. It's calling methods, dynamically calling methods, like method h1, uh, method include groovy. Uh, but in, in the end, what you get, you get a, a, comp a compiled HTML uh, like uh, that is combined from this code. So it, it depends on what you prefer. Uh, if you like like standard HTML uh, with, with JSP tags, or you want to construct it more like a more d data structure, uh, that, that then you can do that. Uh, I mentioned testing with GAP, uh, uh, but also Redpack from from the from the ground uh, was uh, from the start was designed to actually be testable and because it's so lightweight you can actually start the full framework in in, in a unit test or part of the framework part or start some of the handlers in the unit test and there are, there are classes that help you to support that like re request picture application audit test HTTP client which actually emulates the full stack but it's because it's so lightweight it's you you probably you probably don't even notice that uh, yeah gap test I mentioned that I mentioned that okay let's look at a bit more complex example where actually we combine several services and let's discuss maybe some operational aspects of those. Uh, okay, well, let's say well, we, we have a like a web shop that we want to build. We have a front page where we have where we actually sell the, like books for example and we have a couple of services that we, ad we depend upon uh, one of them is like review service another one is a booking service where we actually order books uh, of course, I'm not going to build the whole thing, but I'm just going to show how, how it may be done uh, in, in, in a simple one to show the principle. Uh, and because our f shop is quite small and has only five books to sell, uh, we don't have any database for storing that, just store them in, in inside the application. So, uh, Yes, we did that already with LazyBones, and then pretty much this, uh, I did the same with, with the free projects that I, that I created before this presentation. Uh, as you see, one is uh, shop front. And I already generated the uh, idea project, and I can start it. Uh, and as you see, it, it pretty much has the same structure as, as the others. It has the, the data, it has the, the style sheets. Uh, and it also has the configuration. And in, in, in this case, uh, I actually wanted to run it under a different port. Uh, and I can do it by, I oh know, actually, actually, the port is specified, you, you can specify the port in, in, in the build file. Uh, if I do it like this, so you, 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 can, spec the port, you can specify the port of your service uh, in, 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 the, in the run command, and then, then when you start your uh, service from command line or from uh, idea, uh, it will basically be using that. So now I'm starting my front service. Uh, it's running in continuous mode, okay. And if we look... If we look at the code, what happens here, it's a bit more complicated than, than what we see before. And uh, one important thing that we actually started using uh, like dependency injection, uh, and uh, introduced a book service which is bound into our registry, our global registry. Uh, and the way we can refer to that service that we constructed 
upon start is uh, you again using uh, groovy, groovy closure parameters. So we can just specify I want this closure to have a parameter of book service uh, with service of uh, with type of book service. So Groovy is smart enough, and Redpack uh, uh, implementation, uh, Groovy implementation of Redpack is smart enough to actually recognize that we have this service in our context, and we just yeah expose it and use it. So it has it actually has information about type parameters. Uh, and what I do next is just we, we we use this service to get our catalog, which is basically a CSV file, nothing else. Uh, what happens next is a bit more interesting because uh, here we actually uh, do uh, additional requests to enrich our data because uh, our, our books are locally, they are in our application, but the reviews for the books, let me I can go to the presentation mode. Uh, the reviews for the books are actually in a different service which is running on a different port. And the thing is that uh, I'm getting them with, with the HTTP client. An HTTP client is not uh, it's not the Apache one, or well maybe under the hood it is, but uh, it is actually a special implementation for Redpack, which implements a non-blocking uh, approach to doing that uh, those requests. So each uh, call to to a client actually constructs a promise uh, that uh, uh, we eventually execute uh, on on in, in in the then closure. So we make a request and we wait for for response. And wh when when it's available, we actually set the book score to to something that we read from the service. So just to maybe. So it's it's get and then we're getting something. Uh, so it's two con two constructions, and then we just return the book the books to 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 the template, which we just populated later. Uh, also, there's another uh, request, which is kind of done in a similar way. We're requesting another service, which is re review service. Oh, sorry, uh, the booking service. We're ordering the books. Uh, and it's uh, done in the same way. So we're doing a post request to uh, remote uh, uh, endpoint. And uh, on error, we actually return some some JSON that says, well, it's failed. Or on, 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 on uh, OK result, we return OK JSON. And Ideally, this was supposed to be used as as a, like an AJAX endpoint, uh, but I'm 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 I'm, I'm going to use it a bit differently. So let's let's see if our application actually running. Uh, let's go to localhost. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a simple shop that's actually selling uh, books about Groovy. One of yours, actually. <laughs> uh, and as you see, it doesn't get any responses from uh, from a review server because th this is supposed to actually show. It's it's, it's not a smiley. Yet, actually, it's in zero zero. Uh, it's supposed to show the rating, but because the review service is down and uh, we don't get any information. We get we get zero. But as you see, nothing actually fails. Uh, everything works. Uh, we just and because it's all asynchronous, we just don't get any results. Uh, and to get those results, we actually just need to start uh, the other service that is called Review Service. And I also created like an idea project for that. And this one is way simpler than the than the other one. And basically, what it does, it just returns a random rating for 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 item ID that that. Uh, uh, well, it still does it like above four, <laughs> so four five. So that does doesn't return like one or two. Uh, but yeah, it's a very simple service, and it started in the same way and just on a different port, uh, and uh, again in the in the continuous mode. Okay, it started. It's work. Maybe I should do this magnifier. Thank you. Okay, and if we now reload our page, we get the scores. So yeah, you see the random that it's supposed to be. Uh, and there's another button that, when which we when we press, we should get uh, kind of a, a JSON response because it's uh, going to the other service behind the scenes. And well, our ideally it should be like a JSON, JavaScript uh, AJAX request, but it's just showing us the response so we can see it's happening. 
Um, it failed. It failed, and it failed because of socket timeout and stuff like that. So if you could try to buy another book, we'd also, also get some favor, I guess, yes. Um, of course, we just need to start another service to, to like, for this to happen. And we, we can actually do a bit great, more, more graceful thing to, to handle the exceptions and handle, handle stuff like that. I mean, we can just see how it's going to work together. Okay, start it. Uh, and if we go now, refresh. <coughs> yeah, we're good, okay. So we kind of bought the book. Uh, okay, so that's, that's, that's the idea. Uh, and the thing is that all these applications, uh, three applications running now, all of them are running in continuous mode. So I can make a change to any of them and we'll get instant updates. And uh, uh, yeah, it's very easy to develop in this way if you have a set of services. Uh, and because of the lightweight uh, nature of the framework, it's uh, also very easy to, 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 to go, go ahead. Okay, where, is my, where are my slides? Let's go back to the slides. Uh, okay, thinking about uh, different operational aspects that you can, you can face with microservices, because without thinking about them, you will probably eventually have uh, some issues with the uh, supporting a lot of microservices because having three is always okay, but having like 100 is probably going to be a problem. Uh, well, if, if you've been on, on Josh's uh, presentation, he's like said, uh, make, make jar not war because the two options in Spring Boot you can do. Well, in, in Redpack, you can't even make war. Well, it's a very peaceful framework. Uh, and but the, the thing is, with the, with the help of uh, Gradle uh, plugins, you can, well, first of all, you, of course, you can build jar. Uh, but also with the help of different uh, Gradle plugins, you can actually also build tar and zip. And also using the uh, another great tool from, from, from Netflix, uh, from the Nebula Gradle plugins, uh, there's a plugin called OS package, which actually can build you a Debian package or RPM package out of the same thing. And uh, that's very handy. I mean, it, it gives you pretty much any deployment option you can have with your operations. If they like jars, you can give them a jar. If you like tars or zips, no problem. If they like RPMs, again, and we should do that. Uh, and this will actually, uh, in my experience, uh, if you give them the right package type, usually it's very well integrated with what operations guys do with, uh, in terms of uh, provision and configuration management tool. Uh, and another thing that Redpack is, uh, as we already mentioned, like uh, things like tools, the frameworks like Hystrix and, and uh, uh, Dropbox, <coughs> drop user metrics are uh, well supported and uh, also well e easily monitorable by, by operations. Uh, well, I took my favorite provisioning tool at the, at, at the time to actually show that we, we can actually do something with the Redpack deployment using Puppet uh, definitions. So we can say that we want our service booking to be deployed on this port and this host and this is like a, a template uh, function. And inside that we define the meet, what we do with that. Uh, so we say we want this PC, uh, Git repository to be available. So we, well, an another option, by the way, to deploy your services is by just getting uh, proper <coughs> tag or version from your uh, Git or subversion repository. It's, it's, it's also a valid version and uh, a valid way of deploying stuff. Uh, and I, I think Ruby was kind of uh, very, uh, they liked that very much, but I think it's also possible with, with uh, small microservices in Java and Groovy, because it's just so easy. And well, I mean, you also you have all the version can, version already in inside uh, inside the uh, version control, and you don't need anything else. Basically, you just need the code and one, one command, two seconds, and you run it. So could be could be done like that. So you check out the particular revision of, of your code because you, you probably don't want to deploy latest code to production because it's going to break. Uh, but you want be sure which one can, can be deployed. Uh, you can actually execute the build, so you can install the app. So you can, by using the Gradle plugin, like uh, application plugin from Gradle, you can create this bin script, service script that you can actually use to, to start your service. Uh, you can actually help your operating system by defining a real operating system service by specifying a file and actually <coughs> saying that I want this booking service to actually run. 
So it will build your application, install the service, start it, and it will all happen in the same like Puppet manifest, which you can give to your operations, and it will be happy because if they do support Puppet, that, that's cool. If they do support Docker, that's going to be even easier. If, if, if they support something like Chef or Ansible, no problem with that. Because you can combine that, and uh, usually, especially if you to, to take a look at like the initial picture that I showed, we had like uh, uh, right back services plus additional data services. We need to combine them somehow. So, and some, somehow developers, they forget that these things also need to be configured. Uh, but the operations guy, they all, all, always remember about that. So combining the tools that operations guys use with the uh, abilities that like Red Pack gives you uh, could, could, be, could be a good good go for that uh, uh, for for implementing the, the good uh, deployment pipeline, continuous deployment. Uh, Hystrix and drop user metrics, I mentioned them already a couple of times, and probably I can. Uh, and of course, when you have all these uh, deployment scripts and. Uh, uh, provisioning code around uh, your your services. It's easy to to go, go to scale and like introduce more services, like I know having identity servers that uh, uh, authenticates your users, having communication gateway that sends emails and uh, SMS, uh, push push notifications, and maybe for review service it makes sense to actually have a se separate moderation service which will gonna help uh, sorting out the reviews. So. Just using Redback will definitely will not solve all your problems, but still it's, it's, it's an easy and good start. Uh, and combining with the other knowledge and combining good experience with other teams and operations teams could, could, be, could be a good fit. Uh, there is another application that uh, I would like to show you. Uh, actually, there's like a, a reference implementation, uh, not reference implementation, but like the, the official example, the, uh, Example from uh, Redback team, <coughs> and again, it's just it's much more complicated than what it has because it has like different ways of doing things. And just to demonstrate the, the like the showcase of the framework, uh, and what it has is actually it integrates with this. Uh, oh no, it integrates with Hystrix and it integrates with the dashboard metrics. And I, I will try to show you those. Or maybe the, the another thing, I, I started tasks now. Uh, if you look at the tasks uh, of this uh, example projects, I go to, oops. So. And this book API spec, which is uh, well, it's an, it's another application that sells book that uh, kind of works with books. And as you can see, it actually has uh, a Redback has an ability to integrate the whole flow of uh, what you're defining your Redback uh, route uh, in, inside your unit test. And you can it kind of well, it kind of stops being a unit test, but uh, kind of very very fast integration test inside, them and, and then you can. You get this HTTP client, and you get it as a delegate, and you can actually uh, do some stuff like. Create book, and you, see, you specify what you want to request from your service, and it's kind of it's running within the unit as it's starting on the random port, and uh, you actually send. You actually send real HTTP request to your mini HTTP server inside your unit test, and you verify your APIs, your uh, uh, logic inside that. So very, very easy and very concise. Uh, okay, and we started this application and finished that. Not this one. Which port is it? Okay, I'll close the other ones to make them.
somewhere. The script is still running, so I need to stop that. Uh, where are you? Oh. Too many, too many jobs. Kill them all. I just wanted to demonstrate you how, how history uh, looks like in uh, like an application, so you, you can see what those monitoring capabilities are okay, available to to you, to, to you or by when you develop. So example books, once again, uh, starting the application. <coughs> And to kind of consume Hystrix data, I need to start Hystrix dashboard, uh, which is a separate application, and it was here. Okay, uh, It's also a Java application, but it doesn't really change much. Okay, our book uh, application is running, and as you see, it has something, and we can we can like sign in with whatever. It could be Andre, Andre. So this is the application that actually implements a lot of patterns that uh, Ratpack is good for. Uh, so, and we have here like history stream, which is a SSC stream. Uh, server-side events, which kind of constantly sends data about what, what's the state of the circuit breakers inside uh, inside the application. But of course, it's not really human-readable. That's why uh, this Hystrix dashboard, which is still starting. OK, what's wrong with that? Something is not working. Why is it doing that? Uh, it was jet around, of course. Let me check Hystrix dashboard. What's, what's wrong with you? I know it's starting. Yeah, it's starting. Uh, okay, so we have this additional uh, application that we can start. Uh, come on. Well, you say you're running. Hystrix dash. Dashboard. Okay, uh, and this is basically like a data accumulator that you can, where you can put this, uh, direct this stream of uh, monitoring data into. And because we are running it uh, here, we can actually just copy it. It's like localhost 5050. Uh, and what it will show, it will show a circuit breaker, which is currently not doing anything. Well, it's, it's closed because it's connected. Uh, and when we start doing something w with the application, I'm oh sorry. Uh, we just do many requests. Uh, the circuit breaker will s 
show that it's happening something. And the, the reason for having this kind of server group circuit break is that if, for example, a backend service is not replying, uh, and we need to kind of face the situation when, uh, uh, and we need to kind of still say, uh, preserve the, this uh, endpoint from failing even further, we can block the, like op open the circuit breaker for a while, and then this uh, chart will be uh, will become red, and there's different kind of uh, configuration mechanisms. You can say that for like for 10 seconds you don't do anything, for five seconds try again, and then if it works, then go to the full speed, uh, and it's very configurable. Uh, and if we go to well, that's how like the more real life scenarios look like in in, in Hystrix. So in this case, it's open, so it's kind of not serving any request to the back uh, to the uh, our external endpoint. Uh, and uh, it's kind of bouncing back the, the, the incoming requests. Uh, and the, the, the closed ones are working fine, so we can see the number of requests, the number of successful requests, uh, bad requests. So it's well one of the tools you can use to monitor a lot of your microservices, especially if they are in a way that they can fail at some point, and you need some kind of resilience that uh, will preserve uh, resources on your system and uh, help you out with, uh, with saving from... from, from major failures and like cascaded failures. Okay, summary and takeaway. So uh, Red Pack can be easily used to prototype web APIs and uh, applications and I hope you've, you've seen that. Learning curve is really small because you can start with a small script and that's actually what I like the most about Red Pack because you can start with a very small script and uh, scale it out with uh, refactorings and uh, proper build quite quickly. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the, the help of IDE is, is, is there. Uh, it also can be used to in a very high performance application because it's non-blocking by default. It's not uh, limiting itself like one, one thread per, per request. And it's a yeah, non-blocking architecture uh, which is bomb has like compute threads that are uh, processing your requests are bound to the, to, to, to the CPU cores. And the blocking requests happening on the different thread pools. So it's uh, kind of very popular programming model at the moment that allows to g get more, more requests in and pr more processing in. Uh, Red Pack is very minimal, it's very simple, kind of may maybe even simplistic, but it's, it's the goal uh, because uh, it gives you the ability to actually choose what you want uh, and not to lock you in into vendor specific stuff, uh, not to prescribe you what, what how you do things and uh, have an actual ability to choose. And the amount of libraries that it already integrates with, like having additional modules like uh, Histrix and Session Redis and uh, some others, actually those are quite well selected and f they actually can be used for most of the just ca use cases, at least from my perspective that that's, that's, that's more than enough. It has library community and I think Redback Slack channel I think is now a few thousand, a few, few hundred people. And yeah, a lot of committers and uh, quite active community, a lot of commits. And it's, it's really evolving, it's really trending. Uh, if you want to read further, uh, of course, go to Redpack.io, which is the homepage. Uh, you can actually so also search in SlideShare for, for Redpack. Uh, there are not many presentations, but uh, there are some. And most of them are from, from Dan Woods, from, uh, who, who is also actually writing a book about Redpack. Uh, also, GitHub project is, uh, is worth looking at. Also, there's another tutorial that uh, Alvaro has created, uh, and it's actually pretty good, uh, pretty good start for, like, if you want to understand the, the basic concept of handlers and chains, and uh, well, they, they are pretty basic, but still, th this is give, gives a quite good dive into that. Uh, the book about Ratpack is 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 cooking now, so it's uh, I, I'm not sure what's going to be released, but probably early next year. Uh, but you, you, you can already get a uh, raw version of that, like first four chapters of that uh, from Rayleigh. Uh, yeah, since it's active, try to contribute I uh, as well, because it's actually quite fun and quite interesting to do that, especially working with all this uh, non-blocking stuff. Uh, it's quite educational, I would say. Uh, and I think I'm done.